So, welcome everybody. All right, so it's time that we gather together again and we dive into the Word of God. So, we are now picking up again from Genesis 26. So, where we left off is uh, we saw that the fighting over the wells that Abraham has dug. And we saw that, okay, the contention stopped, yeah, when God intervened. The contention will never stop, yeah, when God does not intervene. And how does God intervene, all right, by opening up the eyes of the oppressors, that open up the eyes, okay, of the people that are persecuting Jacob. All right. Sorry, Isaac, <laughs> I get confused again. All right, so we are seeing, all right, that the Bible says in Proverbs sixteen seven, when a man pleases God with his ways, he makes even his enemies at peace with him. Yeah, so indeed, we see that, okay, it was pleasing in God's sight to see that his anointed one, yeah, in his day that he was anointed for, was following the prophetic calling upon his life, the anointing upon his life, and he was working towards it. Was working towards it, right? So here we see that when did they strive? They strove when it was a time of famine. So it's not just because I want to get more, but because it was a time of famine where water is scarce. And we saw that God blessed, all right, Isaac. God blessed Isaac. Why? Yeah, because he heard the voice of God. Yeah, of course, in the beginning, we saw that he continued to dig, yeah, where his father Abraham dug. But there was contention. So God wants to do a new thing in our lives. We are not to go back all right, to the things of the old, but we are to go forward in the things of new. Do not stay in the old wine, but be conformed and be transformed into a new wine skin so that you may receive the new wine. So we see here that because Isaac followed after his mistakes were found out, he repented and he knew that even though he was a deceiver by deceiving Abimelech, yeah, by saying that his wife was his sister. Even when his sin was found out, he found grace in God's eyes. Yeah? And we did say that last week, okay, it does not mean that God condones sin. No. Yeah? It is the grace of God that covers that sin. That is why some people do not understand about grace. Yeah? Even in Apostle Paul's time. He said, shall we sin even more because of grace? So this is something okay, that we need to really understand. Yeah? Grace has been from the beginning in the book of Genesis. We saw that when Adam and Eve sinned. Yeah? God forgave their sin. But, all right, yeah, they need to meet the consequences of their sin. Brothers and sisters in Christ, sin does not leave us just like that. 
it has its consequences. Even let's say we have repented, it has its sin. Yeah, some are more lasting, more long lasting. Some are not. If you have sinned against your body, that is something, okay, that needs to be dealt with bodily. If you are seen spiritually, you have to deal it spiritually. Yeah? If you have seen in the mental aspect of it, you need to have forgiveness of sin in that area. It's not that simple. So why do I say that, right? If you have neglected your body, yeah, you have not taken care of your body, you did not eat well, well, that is the consequences of not taking care of our health. Okay? So that doesn't mean that prayer does not work, it works. Yeah? But the thing is, okay, when we have sin in the body, we need to atone it in a body form. Example, yeah? We're talking about intake to our body. What about people who have experienced drugs? Yeah? Some of them, okay, the effects are still there. Because they have already opened up their mind, their body, okay, into that realm. And they have to constantly fight it. So it is not a simple thing. Yeah, it's not a simple thing that we want to say, oh, God, all right, forgive me. No, we see. We see what David did, his consequences. Yeah. So all these, okay, are consequences of sin. But they are not curses, okay? Still, we need to have to understand these are not curses, but these are sins. Okay, sins. Yeah. Consequences. Yeah. That we may have followed from our forefathers. Example here, we see that what is the sin Isaac did? Yeah. Isaac, okay, followed wrongly in the steps of his father. Yeah. When Abraham lied about his wife being a sister, he also followed. Right? And every time we see the case, God had to bail Abraham out. God had to bail Isaac out. So we see the grace of God in both these patriarchs' lives, Abraham and also Isaac. Yeah? So Isaac was again trying to dig up all right, the old wells. Yeah. Where has already been covered up. Yeah, but what did God say? What did God say? Look at chapter 26, verse 2. Alright? He says, And the Lord appeared again to him. Say, sorry. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell you of. Yeah. So you have to stay there. Even though there's a famine, you stay there. And I will show you the place all right, where you will be able to get water. So here we are seeing, we are seeing a contention of water. Because it is so important to livestock. It is so important to their livelihood. Now, earlier I said that what was it, okay, that made his enemies open up his eyes, yeah, to make peace, to make peace with Isaac, all right? It was because God blessed, God blessed Isaac abundantly, even when it was famine. The word tells us that Isaac sowed in the days of famine. And that is 
outright crazy. Who would want to sow seed when you know that there will be no source of water? But God says, do it. And he did it. God's obedience, okay, goes against our human thinking. So we need to obey God, right? And forsake our own understanding, our own human thinking. Our home, our own thinking will be, let's go down to Egypt where there is water. But God steps in right now because God knows that Isaac was following in the footsteps of his father when he lied about his wife, right? And he may go down to Egypt again. So God says, stay. Do not move. But, 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 stay. Don't move. Do not think that the other place is better than where you are now. Though you see dry land, though you see there is calamity, famine, stay. Why? Because I am thy God that will bless you. The blessings of Abraham shall come upon Isaac shall come upon your descendants. Stay where you are. Do not run. Do not go to the left nor to the right. Stay. Because I have called you here. Stay until you hear my voice. So that's what he did. And because he obeyed, the Bible says that God blessed him not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold. <laughs> That's where his enemy's eyes opened. And we saw that not only did God bless him, all right, he also enlarged his army until his enemies were fearful of him. So, we continue on with verse 24. Alright, so we stopped at Rehoboth, right? Okay, verse 22. And he removed from hands and dig again another well that they strove not. And the name of it was called Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Yeah, and he went up from thence to Bashabia. We'll talk about Bashabia later on, yeah? And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. So we did go over this understanding. Yeah, It's not because that Isaac was good it's not because that Isaac followed completely, obediently, what God ordered him to do. Nope. How did Isaac inherit the blessing? He inherited the blessing by what? Yeah? Number one, definitely, yeah? It is a family thing, okay? They are family related. But look at this, what it says. I will multiply your seed for my servant Abraham's sake. It is not because, Isaac, you did well. No. It's because of the promise I gave to Abraham, your father. And I said, I will bless him and I will bless his descendants. And because you are his descendants, you are being blessed. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, salvation is for everybody. It's not how, how you strive. 
is not about using your human understanding. The Bible says that, okay, when they found this well, it was a well of living water. And we know what living water is. It is talking about the living waters of salvation. We do not need to strive yeah, to drink the water of salvation. It's already been given. If you and I believe in the promise of God, that whoever believes on my Son, Jesus Christ, that if He is the one that you believe will take away the sins of the world, and not only the sins of the world, but your sin, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you are saved. Not by any kind of works. It is a gift of God. Clearly it says here, it is not by works yeah, that we will be able to live eternally. We saw here, yeah, Abimelech and his brothers and his friends, yeah, they were also striving to live. <laughs> Abimelech, his army, his friends, okay, they represent, yeah, another gospel. There's no other gospel given to us on earth that we can be saved but the gospel of his son Jesus Christ that as his, at his name every knee shall bow every time confess Jesus Christ is Lord there's no other name and here we're thinking they are striving for the living water they are striving for the waters of salvation they want to live but here we're talking about what? human living but when we look in a spiritual understanding it's talking about what? It's talking about spiritual living. Your eternal life. No kind of striving will be able to lead you to that well of living water. It's only when God is the one that calls you and brings you to that living water. Hallelujah. Amen. So, do not go back yeah, to the old, but come to the new. God has done it, everything on the cross. He has given you a new covenant. You shall love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Wonderful, isn't it? Just by believing, all right, in Jesus Christ, and there's only now, all right. You see, what man did with the laws, they added to it. What God did, all right, God compiled it into two for us to easily follow. Man complicates. Yeah? God does not complicate. God makes it easy. If any one of you who are heavy, burdened with sin, come. My yoke is light. And what is that yoke? That simple law. Go and go back to that law of the old. But come out and come back to the law that God has given. Light, not burdensome. 
Yes, you and I are to pick up the cross and follow him. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, even as Christ did everything for you, yeah, you are also commanded to follow his ways, to bear fruits his ways. So whenever Isaac went back to Abraham's wells, he was not fruitful. Even if they found water, there will be contention. Because Isaac was using his human understanding, leaning to his human understanding. Yeah? And even when he became great, God says that, okay, leave. Alright? Do not contend with them. Even as Abraham did not contend with his nephew Lord. And we saw God prospered Abraham. You can have the best. You think it's good, good. Take it. Yeah. Why? I have the best. Because God is the best. You think you have the best? Go ahead. Take. Because God is with me. I don't need wealth. Yeah, I do need material position. Yeah, I have Jesus. If I have Jesus, I have everything. You think that you are even bigger and stronger than me. Yeah, because every man left was strong. Yeah, he was able to persecute Isaac. But when Isaac listened to God, he began to prosper. And his prosperity was way beyond man's understanding. In the days of famine, he could reap a hundredfold. And that brought fear. And that brought fear yeah, to Abimelech till he came and said that he will make peace with him. We talk about Rehoboth, okay? So they did not want to strive anymore with him. Isaac said, okay, this is where, all right, we will be fruitful in the land. When he went up from there to Bashiria, the Lord appeared unto him the same night, said, I am God of Abraham, yeah, thy father, fear not, for I am with thee, I will bless thee, multiply thy seed, for thy Abraham's sake, my servant. Yeah. He built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And Isaac's servants did well. And Abimelech went to him from Gerar and Ahuza, one of his friends, and Bishol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come you to me, seeing that you hate me? Have you not sent me away from you? They said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with you, and we said, Let there be an oath between us, even between us and you, and let us make a covenant with you. 29. And you will do us no hurt, as we have not touched you, as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace. Thou ah. Now, the blessed of the Lord. So you see, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, even okay, his enemies are at peace with him. Yeah? Now, let's continue on, yeah? I hope you're following me so far, yeah? Okay? So you see, because of God's blessing upon Isaac. They saw it. He says, it is impossible unless God is with him. And they got scared. Yeah? And they will be also scared because they were scared that Isaac will one day even conquer yeah, his country. So before Isaac did that, 
they went to make a covenant with Isaac. So, so the Bible says that, okay, they have a feast. They did eat and drink. And they rose up in the morning and swear to each other. And Isaac sent them away and departed from him in peace. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servant came and told him concerning the well which they had done. We have found water. Again, everything that Isaac did, his servant man's did, yeah, it was blessed. Wherever they dug, they found water. And he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Sheba unto this day. So Sheba means good fortune. Alright, and Bathsheba means well of good fortune. So here, okay, we see that, okay, we're talking about Esau now, yeah? So verse 34, And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Biri, the Hittite, Bathsheba, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. And it came to pass, that when Isaac was old, his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold, now I am old, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy, thy weapons, thy quiver, thy, thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. And I'll make me savory meal, such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, and my soul may bless thee before I die. Alright, so we see that, okay, we, Genesis 27 stopped at verse 35, right? But in fact, in fact, yeah, Genesis 26, sorry, 25. 26, yeah, stop at verse 35, but in fact, it should have stopped where? At 33, and chapter 27, okay, should start, yeah, at verse 34, okay? So whenever we read the Bible, yeah, do not be conformed, all right, to the writings of man, yeah, because it says, okay, it starts here, chapter 27, verse 1, no, all right? Because the Holy Word of God is continuous. Yeah? There are no breaks in it. It's only because we can understand God, we compartmentalize God so that we can understand Him better. Because our mind is futile to understand God. Our mind is still at the mercy that we can't understand God fully without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we see here that, okay, we start the story of Esau at verse 34. Yeah. Just to give you an understanding so that you will understand the scriptures even deeper. Yeah. Because chapters are meant to make it easy for us so that we can understand. But it is really, really, okay, what the Word of God says, it is a continuous, continuous living water that can never be stopped. So we see here that, okay, now Isaac was old, his eyes were dim, he could not see. And he called Esau his eldest son. So we saw okay, that this is now the contention for the birthright. Yeah? In chapter 26, we see the contention for the well of water. And then we see okay, that spiritually, right, it is talking about salvation. Now here, what do our spiritual eyes help us to understand? In chapter 27, all right, as we go along, we will be able to see. So we see here that, okay, this is a time of blessing. Yeah, 
that Isaac wanted to bless okay, Esau, his firstborn. So, maybe continue, all right, in verse 5. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison oh, and to bring it. And Rebekah spoke unto Jacob, his, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord, before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch from me two good kits of goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father, that he may eat it, and he may bless you before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I'm a smooth man. All right? My father, pre-adventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said to him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Now only obey my voice and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory meat as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of his eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put on the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hand and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came, and he came to the father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, who are thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according to thou what thou badest me to do. Arise, I pray thee, sit, eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come here, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether you be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father and felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned not, because his hands were hairy as his brother's Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Are thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him. He did eat. He brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said, Now, come near, my son. Kiss me, my son. And he came, and he kissed him, he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, God give unto thee the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn. Let people serve thee, nations bow before thee, be Lord over thy brethren, and thy mother's son shall bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curses thee. Blessed be he that blesses thee. So we see here that this is a time all right, that Isaac was getting old and his eyes were getting dim. And he wanted to bless his son Esau before his death. Now, this passage is talking about discernment. Yeah? It's talking about discernment. And he said, Behold, now I am old, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, thy bow, go out to the field, make me some venison, make me savory meal, as I love, 
and bring it to me that I may eat and my soul may bless thee before I die. Now you see, when the Bible says, do not lay hands on anyone hastily. I repeat, do not lay hands on anyone hastily. Now, what does that mean? That means you are commissioning someone. Yeah? You are blessing someone. We need to have discernment. Yeah? To who will take up after us. We cannot simply pass a ministry yeah, to someone yeah, who is of the flesh and not of the spirit. We have ascertained that Esau is a man of war. Esau is a man of flesh. But Isaac yeah, is the man of peace. Isaac is a man of the spirit. Now, those of you, okay, uh, you want to understand more, you can go to our videos before this and then you can understand, yeah? So, it is very, very important, yeah, whom we bless. Whom shall take over the ministry? For the ministry is not ours, the ministry is of God's. A ministry that is being ordained of God, right, will carry on to its rightful ownership if we have discernment. Here we see that Isaac was old and his eyes were dim. But the question is, okay, Isaac waited until he lost discernment. Then only he started to bless. He should have done the blessing, yeah, when he was strong, yeah, when his eyes could see, yeah, and he knew that he can hear properly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh I caught something just now, okay. Um yeah, I just like to say to you, okay, before I forget. Okay, see, see, see. And Jacob went near, okay, verse twenty two, uh, okay, this uh this uh Follow with me. Eh? I just uh, received this, so I just want to show it, uh, you know, tell it to you because before I forget it. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father. He felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. So you see the discernment, okay, that Isaac pronounced over his sons, okay, was by feeling. It was not by hearing. He heard that the voice was Jacob's voice. But why did he continue to bless him? Because his discernment, okay, was already, yeah, fading away. So what I'm trying to say here, brothers and sisters in Christ, those of you pastors, okay, um, that you have ministry, do not wait until, okay, you're going to kick the bucket, all right, and then you want to give your legacy to someone. Do not wait until your eyes are dim, you can't even discern, and you're only, you know, using your soul, you're using your your flesh to see things. That's where ministries fail because we don't have discernment. All right. Some people are even worse. They will sit, all right, at the leadership until they pass on. I say they pass off then only someone else will take his place. This is not so. Alright? In the ministry, you need to be already knowing whom will take over. Right? And when you take over, you can still guide him. But 
if we have passed a ministry to someone, you are no more there, right? Do you know you have done the right thing? You can't. Yeah? But if you have passed it to someone, yeah, you can still guide because not everyone in the ministry can hear from God. Maybe you can hear for your spiritual son until he can develop that hearing. Yeah. So the blessing okay was given because of the soul, where we can see earlier. Alright. And then the feeling, yeah, the flesh. It was not the hearing of the voice. It was not spiritual. Alright. So we see here that his eyes were dim. He could not see properly. Yeah. His discernment, okay, was dim. He was losing it. Only when we are losing it, then we want to pass the baton to someone else. You see, God does things so differently from our human understanding. Be discerning. Be discerning. So he called Esau because he was thinking that the firstborn should be the one that should be receiving. Now we know that, okay, God already told Rebecca, his wife, that the elder shall serve the younger. Okay? Now, whether Isaac knew of this prophecy, it is not stated here. But whether he knows or he doesn't know, if he were walking right with God, he would be able to hear because this is not something trivial. Trivial, yeah? Because you need to pass the blessing on. So praise God that God has prepared Rebecca to receive that prophecy. Because she was the one carrying the nations in her womb. And because of that struggle in there, God told her, yeah, that there are two nations in your womb, yeah, but the elder shall serve the younger. It's already been prophesied. Isaac did not hear clearly, so he wanted to bless Esau. Well, good enough, because we understand that in the Jewish culture, it's the firstborn that will receive the blessing. Yeah. But the thing okay, that we did not really see is that even when the father called Esau, says that go and find game for me, venison for me, so that I will bless you after I eat it. Yeah. Esau did not tell the father that he has sold his birthright. Now, yeah, there was deception, yeah, on Esau's part. You see, when we look into the Bible, okay, we have been taught, all right, that yes, Jacob, okay, deceive. He's a deceiver. But at closer look at the word, we see that, okay, it's a different understanding because he was the one that to rightly receive the birthright. There was this hunger in him, the zealousness in him that his brother was not keen on the birthright. Though it was given to him on the silver plate, he was the firstborn. He received not the birthright. The Bible says that he despised the birthright. Now, can I go further and tell you, okay, what this means? Yeah.
the blessings of God came to Israel. But Israel despised the birthright. And because of Israel despising the birthright, yeah, it was given to the Gentiles, to you and I. Is it fair, my brothers and sisters in Christ? Are we now then the deceivers? No. Yeah. The Jews may paint us this way. <laughs> yeah. That we deceived. And we are taking part of the, he, the Jewish blessings and heritage for ourselves. They think it that way. You see, without further discernment, we will be caught in a dilemma. We'll be thinking that we are the one who robbed. No, we never robbed. We were given. Remember, in the Bible it says that the first shall be the last, the last shall be the first. These are all things okay that um, you know we can go deeper into, but I will not. All right, it's for you to those who have, you know, <laughs> you want to study, you can study on your own. Okay, we don't much time there. But what I'm trying to say, okay, that okay, God's purpose prevail. God's purpose prevail. So we see that Isaac waited till he was not. Having discernment, only he started to bless. And that was one of his all right, wrongdoing. And I believe, okay, that he was also not truly walking true with God. If he was truly walking with God, he would have his discernment even sharper than before. But no. Yeah. So, as human beings, okay, we have okay, our limitations of how well we can do for God. And there will be someone else, okay, who will take over. Yeah. Who may not have that ability as we have, or can be even more. But the important thing, okay, God's purpose prevails. Here we are not comparing about you know who is more holy and uh, who is more righteous. Okay, we are understanding the promise of God, and we understand okay that Isaac, okay, received the blessing because of Abraham. Yeah, and now we see it. Okay, we see uh, Jacob. All right, receiving the blessing again because of Abraham. We are seeing okay that people okay who are not deserving, people who are sinners, receiving the grace of God. We are seeing sinners, people who are not righteous, yeah, being called righteous. And that reflects on you and I, my brothers and sisters. We are not deserving to receive anything from the Lord. We have never sought to seek after God, but God came to seek after us. As we shall see, yeah, God appears to Isaac even after Isaac has sinned. Yeah, he deceived Abimelech. But God appears to him. Why? Because of Abraham's sake. Now why do God still continue to listen to you and I even though we have sinned? At times we don't even repent. Yeah, because of Jesus. What Jesus does. 
Yeah, God just looks at Jesus, what he has done. It is Jesus' works that gives us salvation. It is Abraham's faith in Jesus' works that gives us salvation. Man has nothing to do with salvation. So it is a gift. You believe it, you receive it. Yeah. So because he was already old, he did not have discernment, and then he said, Hey, you know, I'm going to die. Make me something. I can eat so I'll be happy. Now, is that the way, all right, that you should be going off, all right, in the flesh? It's all in the flesh. You see, the, okay, what he wanted was just meat and wine. And he's satisfied. You can give me meat and wine. I'll bless you. Isn't that in the flesh? So can we say, okay, if someone, okay, who is within your ranks, okay, someone who can achieve great for the church, he can have big congregations, he can bring lots of people into the church, bring tidings, is he the one? Are we looking at the flesh? So, brothers and sisters, it is still up to God, whom God all right, will be able yeah, to put on the throne or on the ministry. Just imagine, he said, go and find me game, you know, something I like to eat, yeah, and then after eating it, I will bless you. Why should these blessings, okay, be preceded by gifts? So you see, um, Isaac was getting old, his eyes were dim, his discernment was fading. Yeah. So, God came and says, it is time for the blessing to be transferred. And that is not the right person because it is the, the younger all right, that will receive the blessing. So that's where Jacob's mother comes in. All right. So uh, actually, it's a wonderful passage, yeah? But I can't go on any further, yeah, because of time constraint. All right, so I do hope, okay, through this short um, Bible study, we can see deeper in the truths of the Word of God. Yeah, it's not just how we see it, but how we allow God to open our eyes to see the truth of the Word. Yeah, reading the Bible once is not enough. I have, you know, invited people who come to our Bible study and says, "Oh, I've done uh, this Bible study course, and I've finished it. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm good." And these are the people, all right, okay, that are thinking, okay, they are so well equipped that they don't need any more word of God. But you ask me. I am still lacking in the Word of God. I know there are more, more things, okay, for me to understand. I have a huge appetite for the Word of God. And I am also picky about the Word of God. You know, I don't simply um, um, just eat the Word of God. Yeah, I need to discern and eat. So to you, my brothers and sisters, discern before you eat the Word of God. Discern before you want to go into any ministry. Discern before you want to go into any partnership. Discern again. The ministry does not belong to you. 
or me, it solely belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah? So, we see, strive using our human understanding does not bring results. Yeah? We saw the shepherds yeah, of Abimelech. We saw the shepherds of Jacob. Right? They were fighting. Yeah? But then, right, it always come to a strife. They could not come to an agreement until God comes in. Yeah? And when God comes in, we see that, okay, there is peace. And there is blessing. Not the way that we do it according to man's understanding or man's ways. But according to God's ways. And God, you see that God blesses, okay, when there's nothing. God blesses, okay, when there's a famine. And here, okay, in chapter 27, we see, um, you know, that discernment is very important, yeah, for making decisions. Discernment is very important that we do, we do not walk by the flesh, yeah, but we walk by the Spirit, hearing and discerning the voice of God, all right, before embarking into anything, okay, before appointing people into leadership. Yeah, before passing yeah, your baton to someone okay, who will inherit your ministry. Okay, so these are the things and the points okay, that we have uh, gone through this afternoon. I do hope all right, this has blessed you even as much as it has blessed me. And I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, you know, even as I sit here all right, and share the word with you, there are many new things that I'm receiving yeah, even as I am teaching, and I'm teaching you, yeah, firsthand. I may have uh, prepared before that, okay, but there are things, okay, that are new that I just share. Yeah, I do hope, okay, it will bring uh, help to some of you, uh, yeah, now or in the future. All right, so with that, okay, I will close with a prayer. Father, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, for your word. Indeed, Lord, your word is life. Oh, Lord, thank you for the lives of Abraham, the lives of Isaac, Jacob, yeah. Even, Lord, for the life of Esau, as they are examples for us to understand. Father, I thank you that Indeed, Lord, we are so blessed that because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, we have salvation. Nothing about our own effort. It's all about you. It's about you seeking us, loving us, and giving us this gift of salvation. It was never I was in the beginning. It was from our elder brother. Yeah. We thank you that you have seen our need and come to our need. Therefore, Father, we just give you all the glory and all the honor for having sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us that we may call you Abba Father, adopted to your kingdom, that we may have salvation, wonderful salvation, that we will never ah, we will never qualify yeah, to receive. I thank you Lord for everyone here. Lord, I just pray that Lord, you continue to bless them, bless the understanding of the world. And I pray, Father, that Lord, even Lord, as you bless the people of Israel, bless us. Because through faith in Jesus Christ, we too are your blessed children. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, thank you.